Hey friends, welcome back. We are on episode 14 of the Real Knitting Podcast. I'm Jennifer, I am your hostess, and uh, I'm a yoga therapist and a knitting instructor, and I am having fun. <laughs> so it is finally fall here in Upper East Tennessee, and you can see that I am wearing a sweater. This is a very woolly sweater, so this is, um, Lamb's Pride, Lamb's Pride Worsted. Um, and of course, it's my color, you love, I know you love my color. And then I did kind of a Fibonacci sequence down the arms. This was one of the first sweaters that I ever knit. And you can tell that because it does not fit me well. But we'll talk about fit here in just a little while. Um, Let's jump in with things that you already kind of know about those. So I do have a finished object, John's little sweater. So I've been teasing this sweater. I've been working on this sweater forever, it seems like, because, um, well, lots of reasons. But one reason is that I, I had knit the same sleeve over so many times. I think I knit the one sleeve three different times. But, I, I've been working on this little sweater for my little buddy. This is out of the book 60 Quick Knits for Little Kids. And it's really the striped raglan sweater in there, but I didn't stripe it. Um, I have a real hard time following a pattern. Does anybody else do that? I also can't follow a recipe. It drives my husband insane. But I, I always change something. Mm. Okay, so I didn't stripe it, so that was that was obvious number one. Um, and then I, but I did use this pretty gray contrast. This is Ella Ray Classic Heather's. It's kind of a wooly wool, but I wanted this to be a nice warm popover that he can just throw over and stay warm all winter long. Um, and I have, I did decide on the one, two, three, four. These classic vintage buttons in the primary colors. And when I finished it, it looked so wide. And my little John, he is, um, I'd love to be able to show pictures of you. Maybe I'll put one of like the back of him or something. Um, but we, we don't show our kids because we got him out of the foster system. So their faces will not be on here. But uh, he's stinking adorable. I wish you could see him. But he's so skinny, he's so little that I looked at this sweater and it was so wide that I decided to come in and pick up and add in another little inch or so. So I think I knitted another, I don't know, inch, inch and a half and then did that same border on it. And it's rolling up a little bit, but I haven't blocked it again, but it kind of looks like an I-cord bind off. So we have a little double I-cord bind off him there and it will it will lay flat once I once I reblock but yay little bitty finished object it's still gonna be huge on him um and I may or may not try to put him in it this year because he's he's got some health issues that he's just not growing quite like they expected so we will see but I'm I'm really happy with this um I have never knit and seamed together a sweater before, but it was easier than I expected. So there's my little raglan seams. Here is the side seam. You can't hardly even tell. Uh, this was mattress stitch, and you see I have a little selvage edge in there because I went in a stitch from the edge. But mattress stitched it all together, just all in one sitting one night. I don't know if I could do that if it was full size sweater, but on a kid's sweater I did. So really pleased with that. Glad to have it off the needles because I cast on another sweater. We'll get to that in a second. But, so there's that. John's sweater finished off the needles. I, I will block it so it'll lay flat and then it's, it's done. The only other thing that I've finished is I've done some more of these little facial cloths that I talked about last time. This is Hempathy. I didn't quite knit this one long enough. I don't know if you can tell, but it's not quite square. <laughs> anyway, 
uh, this is the Hempathy print. So Hempathy is um, hemp, modal, and cotton. And it'll make a great facial scrubby. And it is so mindless. And um, if you saw last time, we we had to put our dog down. And I also lost a dear friend. And, and the combination was a lot. And so I spent a lot of time just mindless, back and forth, don't talk to me, just let me breathe kind of knitting. Um, so that's that's going on but it's also a work in progress because she was having a sale over at yarn teaks our local yarn shop so of course i got a second ball empathy prints this is elizabeth no elizabeth lavold um it's a sport weight cotton hemp and modal yeah uh i got a second ball so i'm just still knitting mindlessly whenever I get the chance because yeah it's one of the reasons we knit it's uh you know a few years ago they talked about how yo knitting is the new yoga well as a yoga therapist I disagree however um it can help us center and breathe and calm and all those kinds of good things all right I got a few more a few more rows on my portage sweater by Melissa Shrewsbury. This is whole scarn super soft, held double. The held double? No, it's not held double. I was thinking it was. No, I actually got an appropriate um, an appropriate gauge for it held single. So when this washes, it will plump up. It'll fluff up because right now it looks super thin and see-through, but the spinning oil will come off of there and it'll floof right up. And this stuff is currently on sale. Uh, I will link to them. I, I'm not an affiliate or anything, but, but they've got a crazy good sale going on. You can get a 500 gram cone of the Holscar and Super Soft. It's 24 plus tax and shipping. I can't do the math as to what that works out like per skein, but it's cheap, y'all. So, uh, I finished the sleeve, took it off the needles, and then put my held stitches of the body back on. Why am I doing the body and not going back to the sleeve? I don't know. I just wanted to work on the body a little bit. So, I've gone back to this beautiful texture. I don't want to give away what it is, but it is, it's a very simple texture. I'll be working on that for a long time. It is living. First of all, it has its little, its little yarn bowl because this thing likes to run away from me. But I also have it in my yarn is part of a high fiber diet bag. Yeah, I think that's just a little nitpicks pickup. You gotta love nitpicks for that kind of stuff. So portage, I got a few rows on the body. You probably wouldn't even be able to tell, but I did. And then I'm still working very slowly. All the all the things last week, uh, last couple weeks, kind of threw me off my game, of course. But still working very slowly on my bamboo pop socks. This is a top down heel flap and guess it with an eye of partridge heel yes it is very traditional i have not yet found a heel i like better so i'm just sticking with my traditional thank you very much and these are carbons dpn's carbons by knitter's pride i believe um and they are these guys are unbreakable or at least so far they're unbreakable i've broken so many dpn's i have not broken these guys Carbons DPNs in a zero because I like bulletproof socks. If I'm going to spend that much time knitting socks, I don't want them to wear out. So I make them pretty bulletproof. And the yarn, I always have extra bits and bobs down in here. The yarn is this bamboo pop sock. 
Yeah, and the uh, colorway, I've got it right here. Color 401 is Overcast. And I got that just as a souvenir yarn when I went to Smoky Mountain Spinnery down in Gatlinburg. I am getting so hot. Uh, this morning, it was 45 degrees outside. And so I have on this very woolly wool sweater. Yeah. It's East Tennessee. It's so going to be 78 or something today. Uh, I'm already burning up. We will see how long this sweater lasts. But I want to talk to you about fit. Hey, but that's all my works in progress. So let's go. Let's hold off on new cast on and let's talk about this sweater so that I can get it off my body because it's hot. All right, so this is one of my first sweaters. It is a bottom-up placket neck sweater that I I made modeled through the the sweater workshop book by Jacqueline Fee, and I've talked about it on here, but I'll I'll link it below also. And Jacqueline Fee takes you through, and she uses Elizabeth's percentage system EPS from Elizabeth Zimmerman which is a standardized um, way of guessing what the body's proportions should be or what, what they typically are, an average. Um, and if you're average, you may love Elizabeth Zimmerman's percentage system. Uh, I don't. Here's why. So, well, first of all, I I am almost six feet tall. I'm like five, nine and a half, five, ten. And my arms are really, really long. Uh, I don't know if you can tell. <laughs> uh, but my arms are really, really long. And despite what this sweater tells you, they are fairly slim. So I hate the way this fits. I don't wear this sweater very often. I may rip it out, even though it is totally my color. You can see it fits real well right through here. Um, I do wish that I had made the ribbing a little bit smaller so that it would anchor to my body so it would stay down. Uh, but here's the problem. Look at all this gaposis. Look at all that. Look at all this. It looks like I have, I have wings. I mean, I, I kind of do have wings. Let's not talk about that. But, but that is not my body wing. That is, that is sleeve, y'all. And the other thing that is, that is wasted money, wasted time, wasted yarn that I, I don't like that. Now, if this, this is a raglan and raglans should be a little bit slouchy. But the sleeve on this is really slouchy compared to, has a lot more ease than the body. So I want, when I have a sleeve, I do sometimes like a tighter sleeve, depending on the style. Sometimes I like a looser sleeve, but the sleeve style should fit the body style. And on this one, the body style is semi-fitted. See, it fits real well. It kind of hugs my curves a little bit because I did add in some shaping here, but this sleeve is just way too big. And I fitted the sleeve, I took the measurements from Elizabeth's percentage system, and I don't fit her percentage. So I'm kind of disappointed by that. Um, I am working up a, a class, uh, probably host in person first, but I might be able to get it up online um, before too awful long too. But this class is uh, something like it's all about the gauge or getting gauge is BS. Here's what you should do instead. I'm not exactly sure, but sweater fit fascinates me. So hold on. I'm sweating. I'll be right back. Oh. Y'all remind me about this when I'm complaining about how cold it is this winter, because I will be. I'm, I much prefer to be a summer person. I love it. 
Um, one of the reasons I knit is so that I can tolerate the winter. Um, okay, where were we? Sweater fit. Oh, yeah. So I'm really excited about doing a sweater fit class. And um, I'm not sure. It takes a certain kind of nerdy brain to want to do the kind of sweater fitting that I want to do. Uh, that I want to teach because it is a way that you will you will fit it every single time every time so if you if you are nerdy um, and you would like to be notified of that make sure that you go down and get on my email list you can get a free pattern while you're there but uh, the email list will be how I contact you and um, I'll make sure that you I'll make sure that you know about my my nerdy geeky little sweater sweater fitting class <laughs> okay so I do have a new cast on I'm not happy with my new cast on my new cast on is going to die so I'm teaching a class um, I'm getting ready to teach a my first sweater class and this class is going to be for beginners who or people who have knit for a while and they love doing accessories they love doing all the other things but they're just a little intimidated by the sweater thing so this one I've called my first sweater my original intent was to do the uh, tin can knits flax that sweater because that's really that's the first sweater that I learned on and um, you know it's a great little sweater uh, but the the shop owner really loves this pattern the wonderful wallaby it's been out since the 80s and then she updated it this is by cottage creations and she updated this one in 2016 and I think the kids came out in 2013 so there there are adult and kids versions of this sweater and I'm super excited about it because I love a good hoodie and you can see this looks like a good cozy very simple hoodie and the shop owner already has a sample up and so that helps me to not have to rush and get my sample ready so that the students can see what they're gonna make and all that kind of thing so if I'm excited to knit it but I kind of ran into some trouble um, I fell in love with this yarn in the shop because it is the softest, swooshiest. This is Barocco Wizard. It is a chainette style. So if you can see, I don't know if my camera there. That looks pretty good. It's it's a chainette style. So it's like it's ah. Uh, already made into a chain sort of and then and then you knit it of course um but it's super soft can you see the halo on there maybe a little bit but it's super super soft super squishy and it's machine washable hello I'm a mom I thought this was gonna be great and it is I do love this yarn however I got to knitting it and I'm realizing that it is way more yellow and green than what I like. So these kind of colors right here, these purples and these darker colors, those look pretty good on me. But I'm running into a lot more of this color. And as you can see, I look like I'm dying. I look a little bit sick when I wear that kind of stuff so I just it's just not me so I'm gonna hang on to this ball because I can do something wonderful with this this will make I mean it's super super floofy I, I do love this yarn um, but it's just not my colors and I I don't care for how stripey it is being now a lot of people love stripes I I tend to just be I like my clothes to be solid so if I'm gonna wear it I really don't want this much striping going on so I'm going back to the yarn shop today probably return these other balls and see 
see what I can decide on. I think she's still having her sale, uh, which makes sweater quantities a lot less painful. So I'm kind of excited about that, but I, I am still really happy with the pattern. I've been knitting in the round. It's a bottom up sweater. I've been knitting on my copper likey needles, which y'all know I love, uh, clickety clacking away. I did a split hem, which I will probably do again. Um, just knit back and forth on the hem on 50% of the stitches back and forth and then do the other 50. And then when you have them all, then you join them in the round. And this little place right here, all you got to do when you're done is go back and kind of reinforce that and it'll just make your sweater wear a little bit better. Um, okay. That's that. Oh, it is living. It is living in my 31 bag that I picked up at a yard sale for 50 cents. I know I'm a crazy yard sale person. Yeah, my husband's like, how many bags do you need? And it's almost like that meme, like, how many bags are there? Of course we need bags. First of all, we're women. Secondly, we're knitters. We need all the bags. All the bags. Okay. So let's go back because I, um, I almost forgot to tell you. I was sewing on these precious little buttons this morning and I, I ran into a little problem. My problem was that the yarn that I was using, where'd it go? Uh -huh. I'll use these as an example. I was going to use these sweet little B ones because John's favorite song is Honey Bee by Steam Powered Giraffe. I'm totally going to link that below. Um, it is an adorable song. But anyway, these are these are funky little bee, bee vintage buttons, but the hole on the back of them is so small that when I was sewing them on, I broke I broke the shank off. That's what that's called that that part that sticks out like that. That's called the shank. And I, I just pushed my needle through too hard and broke it off. But here's an example. I had to have a small enough needle to go through the hole all the way through. And you see, if, if I have got a good yarn needle, my eye is too big, it won't come all the way through. Or it just, like, that one just barely came through that hole. So I have to be real careful because that's how I broke the other one. And so the, the one, two, three, four, it actually had smaller holes than this. So I wanted to use, I wanted to use this needle and you can see how tiny that little hole is, but it was the one that fit all the way through the, the shank of my button without that wasn't gonna break my button like I did I did on the others so how in the world do you get this fat yarn into this skinny little hole so um, I tried the the way I always do which is and I'll do I'll do a separate short on this because I think people need to know this but you Fold your yarn in half, put your needle in, and then pull it up tight, and it kind of makes a crease in the yarn, like this. So you have this little bump, and then you can just take your needle and, and sort of wiggle the eye down over the crease of the yarn, pinch it at the top, and slide it through. So that's how I, that's how I normally can't see my face when I do that. That's how I normally put yarn through a hole, but this little needle was so skinny that there was no way, no way that was gonna go through. So what do you do? So this morning I made an emergency run to the Dollar Tree. Y'all know I love them. Check out my Dollar Tree video. And I was hoping that they had, I know you've seen them, they're like, 
little loops of plastic floss, but they didn't have those. But they did have regular floss, which, yes, we have regular floss at home, but then I might not have a pretty one to show you guys. So anyway, so here's the floss, and I'm just going to cut off a length of it. Now, I'm going to take my two ends of my floss together, or one at a time, it doesn't matter. And we're going to thread those through the hole on the eye of the needle. See, those went through just fine. Because these are waxed, it helped even more. Because it made them a little bit, you can see they're a little stiff. Now, all I have to do let's see, is drop the yarn down the hole that I made in the, in the floss. So I looped into my loop. So then I'm going to pull on the floss and it does require a little tug. Hold on. Oh. My grandmother would say you had to hold your tongue just right to do it. Uh, but as I popped it all the way through and you could hear the noise. That's because it was so tight getting it in. But there, threaded needle. So if you're ever, if you're ever stuck, dental floss did the trick. There we go. All right, so let's do our yoga. I'm gonna pause and scoot you guys back so you can see. Okay, so our yoga pose today is going to be Virabhadrasana one. We're gonna do warrior one, and it looks like this. We're gonna be standing, we're gonna take a big step back, and bend the front knee. I know you can't see that, but I'm bending my front knee way, way down. I'm going to turn my chest toward my front knee, lift up and reach up for the sky. Now, if it feels okay, I'm going to reach up and look up between my hands. Yeah, that's warrior one. So what we're looking for here is stretching the front side of the body right through here as we lift up. So you can even do that part in your chair. You can just turn and put one leg back and lift up through the low body. Really stretching, maybe reach up again. There we go. Okay, that stretch felt really good. So now that we're back, um, I just have a couple of things to talk about, like what's, what's going on with us. Our adoption should be happening anytime soon. I'm, I'm really excited about this. Uh, John turned two in July. If you don't know, uh, John was a foster child. We got him when he was three days old, straight out of the hospital. Um, we didn't expect to have a, a newborn that we would be able to keep, but here we are about to adopt our precious tiny little one. And that should happen I don't know, maybe October. We'd kind of hoped for September, but you know, coordinating with courts and DCS and us and the lawyer and all that kind of thing. So we'll, we'll get there, we'll get there really soon. Um, and I've got a cute little sweater vest. It's not anything I made, but a cute little sweater vest that hopefully it'll be cool enough for him to wear when we adopt him. And then uh, the, I was gonna talk about sweater weather because I'm like, oh, it's sweater weather. <sighs> but it's really not. I mean, <laughs> you, it's one of those things where it's like winter in the morning and fall by lunchtime and heat of summer by two o'clock in the afternoon. I mean, I, I could probably wear shorts outside this afternoon. And you saw me in a sweater just a few minutes ago. Um, for those of you who live in climates that don't shift that drastically, uh, that's just East Tennessee. That's kind of just what we do. Um, you, you can't predict what season you're going to be in. But I guess that's part of the fun. That's part of what makes our leaves turn out so colorful. Uh, people drive from all over to come see our leaves. So, I don't know. I guess we'll deal with it. Um, I want to talk a little bit about my background here. So I didn't, I did not completely remove 
the fo- the the painting that we had here because the that painting uh, is an heirloom of my husband's, but it just didn't seem to suit what I was trying to do here, and so I got a thrift store picture. This is actually glass that I painted and converted, and this is this is my little logo. It's a little yoga girl with needles and yarn, and I made some. Anyway, I did a, I did a short little video. If you're not on Instagram, follow me on Instagram, um, and you can see the little video about making that. And then I just have this little ceramic pumpkin, and inside, I got these pre-COVID. I got this set from Unplanned Peacock, and it's sock minis, and they are 115 yards each. And I think there's six of them. One, two, three. Nope, there's five of them. They're just so Halloweeny and happy. Have I knitted anything with them? No, but they're decorating my house. That's fun, right? Okay. Last thing, I did a new video. I did a Halloween video of my picks for my favorite Halloween patterns for the year. Um, one of them isn't even out yet. It's just in testing. It's but I found it on Instagram fell madly in love so check out that halloween video next and thanks for being here see y'all next time